Hello, Adam Harris from Stockwell Safety and what I'm going to be going through today is stage two of how I would approach answering any Bosch Open Book exam question. So stage one, I would advise having a look through that first before having a look at stage two um, because otherwise I don't think a lot of what I'm going to go through in stage two will make much sense. So with stage two, what we've got already is the work that we did in stage one has provided us with this list here of ideas that we just basically pulled out of the scenario uh, and threw onto the page. Um, and now it's time to go back to some of them, not all of them, but some of them, and then develop the ideas a bit further. What I'm going to do is just go through the list I want to find one that I think would be a useful argument, that I think would give me a useful argument. I can then sort of flesh it out a little bit. So let me show you how I would do that. So a local, local businesses and the general public. Local businesses and suppliers may decide to cancel contracts and stop working with us because of our poor safety standards. This would force us to find new suppliers from further afield. This will involve significant amounts of time and money. So that's an idea that has been fleshed out a little bit to try and make a persuasive argument. Uh, I know it's a bit rough in terms of the spelling and that sort of thing, but I can always go back and correct that later. I can only develop that argument further because I have done my study and so it's important. I'll re-emphasize the point again, you need to have done your study in by the time the exam rolls around. Number five I'm looking at now, stocks of goods are arranged on racks of shelving. The storage arrangements mean that if or when a forklift truck strikes the racking, we damage a large amount of stock in addition to damage to the racking itself and possibly floor and building structure too. There's another financial argument uh, to be made there. Now what you can do obviously is, is use your resources that you've got available to you it, uh, because it's uh, an open book exam. So for example, a lot of what I'm drawing on in, in my head, but uh, I've got, a, I've got a, a copy of it available, is in on our learning management system in this section that deals with the financial costs of incidents. We draw quite heavily on there uh, on that section from this document here that, were, that is produced by the HSC, Reduce Risk and Cut Costs. If I open that document, you can see that it covers some of the costs to companies from poor health and safety in general. 
and then it covers the iceberg model. I'm not going to go into too much detail about that because um, I want to keep the video short, uh, well, as, as short as possible. But it's important that if you are using um, resources like this, you must put that into the box towards the end of the document. It says documents and sources of information you used in your examination. So we've you I've used that reduced risk cost, cut costs document. So I'm going to copy and paste that in there. What I would do is is I would do that as I'm going. I'd keep a running sort of list going of any documents that I've used. And of course, I've used the Stockwell Safety course content. So I might as well put that in there as well. Um, and then obviously any other documents that I use as I'm developing answers to these to these questions I would insert as I'm going through what I what I'm doing is I'm just going through this list looking for areas where I feel that there's a I can expand on it so for example number six delivery trucks coming into the um, into the warehouse that's something that I'd previously copied and pasted obviously over from the scenario. So our suppliers come on site in delivery trucks. They could sue us for damages if there was an incident that caused harm to them or one of their workers. I'm going to continue going through that list, putting in arguments that I think would obviously gain points that are relevant to the scenario. When I fleshed that out, because I don't, I don't want the video to be to be too long so I'm going to cut the video now continue along the same lines as what I've outlined so far and then break down how I got to those answers I don't want you to just be sat, sort of sat there watching me type these answers in so I'll cut the video talk to you in a sec So I'm back and it's about 20 minutes later and I've gone through the rest of the list and I'll just go through it with you. So, so you can see that some of them I've missed out because nothing occurred to me in the moment that, um, that I felt I could develop a, a decent argument around. So some I've skipped um, and then when I got to 11, collisions with products causing damage and spillages. And what I'd put is reducing the number of collisions currently happening frequently will save the company significant losses on product damage and spillages, maybe even enough to offset the cost of my proposals. And what I'm doing is I, I, this is my sort of preference. I'm not saying you have to do this, but I'm kind of imagining that I am that health and safety manager. So I'm writing it in the first person perspective. It just make I, I find it easier to do that to kind of get into the character almost I suppose in addition to the cost of the damaged goods we incur costs due to the time involved in clearing up the area and carrying out remedial repairs so I'm, I'm, I'm literally imagining what I would say if I was the health and safety manager in that business 12 I didn't put anything for 13 many injuries recorded over the years and I wrote, there have been many injuries recorded over the years in relation to forklift trucks. Even relatively minor injuries cost the business money, first aid, completing accident reports, disruption to work, production. These costs are easy to miss, but might uh, but add up to a large amount over time. And the good thing is that because we've drawn these bits in red, we've drawn these directly from the scenario. So it almost guarantees that what we're gonna be putting in here is relevant to the scenario or it helps us keep the argument relevant to the scenario. So I missed out 14, 15, 16, but when I got to 17, I felt there was, some, there was definitely something there. 
So the worker's off work for six weeks. So the injured worker will be off work for six weeks. During this time, we're going to be paying them sick pay and we will also have to pay overtime to replacement workers to make up the lost time. And a further point was that there may be a training cost from needing to train up the replacement workers in how to operate forklift trucks safely. And then it went into 18, the claim for compensation is a fairly obvious cost. The injured worker is putting in a claim for compensation. If the claim is successful, our insurers will increase the cost of our insurance premium renewal. And then further to that, if we have to make a claim, our insurers are likely to require these improvements in order for them to continue to cover us. Or they could sue us if they believe we have not met our legal requirements. And that information comes from the guidance documents that are produced by the HSE. There's, there's two of them. There's Employ Employers Liability Act, a brief guide for employers, and Employers Liability Act, a brief guide for workers. So they're two um, those two documents work hand in hand. But again, because I've used, I think it was this one that mentioned the fact that insurance companies, they will pay out the compensation, but if they feel that the, the employer has been in breach of their legal duties, even though they pay out the, uh, the compensation claim, they do have the right to sue the employer for damages that the insurance company has, has incurred due to them not complying with legal legal requirements. So I'm, I'm gonna put that in as well, uh, along with my, my reduced risks, cut costs. And uh, also it, it was the uh, Stockwell Safety Online Course Content. 19 worker absence and turnover are high so I, I thought that was something that could be developed the staff turnover is high and them not feeling safe at work is likely to be a big reason why it's far more economical to retain workers than to recruit new ones and train them up i missed out 20 21 but when i got to 22 I thought there was something worth developing there. So no money for that kind of thing. And even if it were available, it would cause too much disruption to the business. What I put as a response is the improvements would actually reduce disruption to the business. Currently, workers are finding it difficult to move efficiently around the workplace. And this is causing jobs to take longer than they need to. And then 23, enforcement inspector who has issued an improvement notice. The enforcement inspector has issued an improvement notice. If we do not make the necessary improvements, they will probably prosecute. For a company of our size, the fine could be as high as 10 million pounds. Now, that is, I've made an assumption there that um, it's quite a large company. So let me go back to the online course resources. I think it's in the next topic to this one but you'll probably be aware of the sentencing definitive uh, the sentencing council definitive guideline within that document that for companies that are classified as large which have got a turnover or the equivalent of over 50 million the maximum fine could be as high as 10 million pounds. Now I know there are other factors involved, including you know, culpability and the, the level of uh, risk that was um, that was involved, but it doesn't change the fact that that is still the 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 maximum amount of fine that a company could face if it's classified as a large company. So again, what I'm going to do is just make sure that I'm referencing that document. So back down to the bottom, and what I'm gonna just put there is the Sentencing Council Definitive Guideline. So do make sure you're using the resources that you've got available to, to you as part of your course, but don't forget to reference them in the box at the bottom. In addition to a fine, there would be significant costs associated with dealing with the legal process. 
solicitors, consultants, senior management meetings, internal investigation, cooperating with enforcement authorities. I got to the bottom then and I thought, well, that's probably enough to be going on with for now because there's a couple of points there that the one above makes it three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. There's 14 possible points within that lot. Um, so I don't I don't really feel the need to go on much further with that question. I'm going to leave it there. But what I would say is that that is rough. It still is quite rough at the moment as because what I was doing, I was just getting it out of my head, really, and, and onto the page. What I'll be going through in the next part, I'll make an, this another video, part three, is I'll be going through my arguments and just making sure that I'm not duplicating, stripping out all of the unnecessary language. I might decide that I do want to include some arguments about things that I might have missed off that list. But basically, I'm at a stage now where I feel that there's enough to be going on with. And what I would do at this point is I would, if it was the actual exam day, I would move on to the next question and I'd go through the rest of the paper, bringing each of the questions up to the point where I've just got this question up to. In the next stage, part three, where it's kind of reviewing and refining the answer, I would do that as a batch. That would be my advice. That's what. That's how I would approach it. I would do it as a batch. What I will do in part three is I will focus just on this question and show you how I would do it. But what I would actually do, I ho I'm hope I hope I'm making sense here. But I would I would just move on. So by the time I would have answered all of the questions, they would all be fairly rough still. But at least I've answered them all. At least I've got some ink on the page. Um, there's probably going to be too many words there, but it's a lot easier to whittle it down than it is to move through each question rather painstakingly trying to get them perfectly refined question by question. So that's the, that's the end of stage two. You've got to manage your time effectively. So, for example, I think Nibosh is saying half an hour is, is what they envisage it should take to answer a question. But that's obviously a personal thing. Some people won't need that long. Some people will need substantially longer. It will probably be the case that you'll need longer for the initial questions than you will for the later questions because the scenario, you'll be unfamiliar with it to start off with. But as the day rolls on, you'll have read this scenario so many times that you'll get more and more familiar with it. So it, it, you'll probably find that um, the initial questions will take you longer than the than the later questions. Assuming that it does take you half an hour, you've got access to your paper from 9am. So you, you could potentially have, let's say, to be conservative, let's say, you know, five questions done by lunchtime. As in done, I mean up to the stage where it's at now, sort of a rough cut. And then you can do another five questions then after lunch. Again, rough cut. So by the time you sort of late afternoon rolls around, you've got the whole paper sort of done as a rough cut. And then that should give you some confidence that, you, yes, you know it's rough, but at least you've got that content out of your head and onto the page and you know from here on in it's just a case of refining and and polishing it I suppose and giving yourself time to develop further answers develop existing answers further or even to decide to scrap some some of your answers and replace them with new ones but you can only really do that if you've given yourself that space and that time to carry out the review towards the end of the day because this way you can have a break uh, have your tea you know deal with other things 
and then come back to it with a, a clear head and then move into stage three, which is is not going to take as long as stage two. I think stage two is what's going to take the most amount of time. Stage three will be sort of uh, refining it. And you might have come up with new ideas in the interim if you've given yourself a bit of a break from it. Um, you'll see all of this stuff knocking around in your head, even if you're off doing other things for a, a period of time. And then you can come into the review stage with yeah, with perhaps some new ideas to develop. But I'll, I'll leave it there and I'll see you soon in part three of the series.